Hello, Dr. Mark Agresti. Are you on the right antidepressant? What is the right antidepressant? Well, it's a little involved, but not much. Let's just take a look at it. First of all, you have to make sure you have depression. These drugs, antidepressants, can be used for a lot of things. They could be used for social anxiety, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder. They could be used for bipolar depression when you have manic and depression. They could be used for post-traumatic stress disorder. They could be used for schizoaffective disorder when you have psychosis with a mood disorder. What else can they be used for? Obsessive compulsive disorder. But let's just, for the purpose of this conversation, let's look at depression. Let's say you have depression. What is the right antidepressant? Well, the one that works is helpful. The one you tolerate. That's how we decide. They all work about the same. With the exception of Effexor, which maybe the studies indicate it may work a little bit better than the other ones. By and large, effects are fenlafaxine. That's when it may work a little bit better, but it's got its problems. The reason we pick an antidepressant and the reason you're on what you're on is, does it work and can you tolerate it? And more importantly is, can you tolerate it? You have to live with these drugs for years, one year and sometimes two years. So for the first depressive episode, one year, for the second two, and after the third one, you're on it for life because the probability is virtually 100% that you'll get another depressive episode. So you really need to take the drug that is tolerated the best. Now, which one do we pick? You want to make sure you're not taking one you've already tried, and it's helpful if a family member has tried an antidepressant, maybe since we are genetically linked to our family members, to try an antidepressant that has worked with your brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandparents, mother, father. Now, in someone who doesn't have a lot of anxiety, the drug I like the best would be bupropion, which is well betrayed. Why? Because most of these drugs cause three things. Sexual dysfunction, weight gain, and emotional blunting. So weight gain is obvious. You eat too much, you gain weight. That's clear. Sexual dysfunction in women, uh, difficulty achieving orgasm, decreased sexual drive, men, problems with erection, problems with ejaculation, problems with sexual drive. That is a major factor. It's like 30-40% of people who are placed on selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, i.e. Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, Luvox, Celexa, Lexapro. That's about it. Trintilex. They all cause sexual dysfunction. And the third major area of side effects is emotional blunting. These drugs have an insidious effect on this area of your brain, which involves our personality, our ability to follow through, our uh, assertiveness, our uh, goal completion, uh, our ability to experience a range of emotions. So people are blunted, flattened, numbed when they take SSRIs. And I listed the ones um, that cause that. So Welbutrin, Bupropion, Welbutrin is a trade name, Bupropion is the chemical name, does not. And I like to use this first as a first-line drug. If they don't have anxiety, they don't have a seizure disorder, why? This drug does not cause weight gain, it does not cause sexual dysfunction, and it does not cause emotional blunting. Frontal lobe syndrome, flattening affect, that's all the same thing. Its problems are it increases anxiety, it may interfere with sleep, it may cause headaches, and it may cause agitation. And for some people of a history of seizure, you can't use it because it increases the risk of seizure. Okay. So now, if we can't use Welbutrin, what do we use next? There's one SSRI, Trintilex, Vortioxetine, which when you use it at doses of less than 10 milligrams, 
the frontal lobe syndrome, the apathy, the weight gain, and the sexual dysfunction are minimized relative to the other drugs. But if you have to go above 10, it becomes more of a problem. But doses of under 10 is pretty good. So if you could use that at 10 milligrams, that would be my second choice. The problems with that one are it can be expensive, and, it, and if you have to go to a higher dose, it can cause sexual dysfunction and, and some emotional blunting, but it appears less than the other ones. Okay. So now, maybe some people can get that one, maybe some people can't. Maybe some people can't tolerate them. These drugs also have significant effects on the gastrointestinal system, nausea, vomiting, malaise, uh, stomach uh, growling. I don't even know the medical term for that. Your stomach goes um, So that could be a problem with Trintilex and all the other selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. I hope I'm not losing anyone. So my first choice is Welbutrin. If they can't take that one because they have anxiety or seizures or for whatever reason, then I go to Trintilex and I try and keep it under 10 milligrams. If I can't use that and I'm treating depression, well, if you've tried one SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, it makes sense now to leave that class and try a new drug from a different class, like a Selective Serotonin neurop Norepinephrine Reuptake Inhibitor, like Cymbalta, Duloxetine, Effexor, uh, femlefaxine or Prestique, which is despemlefaxine. You could try one of these three drugs. But now you're getting into more dizziness, sweating, sexual dysfunction. They work great, though. In this class, uh, Cymbalta can work great if you have neuropathic pain and depression. It works great for that. And Effexor happens to work great, femlefaxine, for panic disorder, uh, great for anxiety, and it's a, an option when you're not responding to the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Now, if those don't work, where do you go? So we tried the norepinephrine drugs, which is Welbutrin, which I like the best. The second class would be the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, Luvox, Alexa, Lexpro, Trintilex. I think I named them all. Those drugs are great. They may have problems with sexual dysfunction, frontal lobe syndrome, but people can by and large live with those. But if those don't work, we go to the selective serotonin nor epinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors, Pro uh, Prestique, Cymbalta, which is duloxetine, and um, Cymbalta du duloxetine. Now, those are three classes. Where do we go from there? If those three don't work, there is a drug called mirtazapine. Remeron. It works great. It's a great antidepressant. Helps you sleep. Problem is, it causes weight gain and drowsiness. The drug works great, but I don't use it a lot because people gain weight. It also has interesting quality, qualities where it treats nausea. Um, now, we've tried those four drugs. If that doesn't work, you can go to uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which are called Parnate, Nardil, and the Clobamide. I don't like using them because they can require special diets, drug interactions, but they work very well. I don't use them that much, but I do use them. Um, the Clobamide can be used at lower doses without the special diet. Any foods containing tyramine cause an interaction. Certain drugs like Demerol or uh, dextromethorphan or amphetamines can cause your blood pressure to spike and you get a stroke. So they were very restrictive in, in terms of um, diet and drug interaction. So they can be dangerous. After that, there are, uh, just for completeness sake, I'll mention it, the tricyclic antidepressants, they're old, they work great, but if you take too much of them, you get a heart attack and die. So I don't like giving them to people. They cause a cardiac conduction block and you die. Those are called nortriptyline, um, amitriptyline, dizipramine, imipramine. Um, 
they're very old. They're like 40, 50 years old. They were based on the molecule of Thorazine. They came out, I, I think, the late 50s, early 60s. So those are the classes of antidepressants. Now, if all those don't work, there's still things we can do. You can um, add antipsychotics. You can mix antidepressants. So there's a host of things I do when this doesn't work. But at first, you keep it simple. And the goal would be try something that worked in a family member, try something you tolerate well, and try something that works. Those are the three key things in picking an antidepressant. So people are on medications, um, don't watch this video and stop it. These drugs need to be tapered and the mixture of, of drugs is important sometimes. So be careful changing your meds. This was meant for education, not for you to become alarmed or to change medications because you heard that Prozac can cause sexual dysfunction or emotional blunting. Also, um, I would like people out there watching this video to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But also, please, someone out there, buy a book. I sell my book on Amazon.com called Tales from the Couch. I get into all the tricks of the trade. I talk about 31 patients and their, their stories and what it took for them, what medications, what therapies it took to get them better. It's all hands-on experience, 30 years. The book's great. I think you'll love it. And if you're having a problem with depression, with anxiety, you can go to that particular chapter in the book, read up on it. The, the book was designed to be a, a, a college course, a one semester course of an intro and 31 lectures. Um, and that's pretty much a college course. Um, and it's complete introduction to psychiatry. So if you read it, you will be informed about 90% of all psychiatric illnesses. And I think it'll be very helpful. So buy the book on Tales from the Couch. And if you do, read it and leave a comment. Thank you, Dr. Mark Agresti.